northern Poland, a rustic region of freshwater lakes, forests, and villages, and thousands of feet below the surface, a potential fortune in natural gas trapped in shale rock. Energy companies are already drilling here, using hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, a controversial method of gas extraction imported from the United States. Uh, we believe that there is uh, the capacity technologically to extract that gas uh, in a way that is entirely safe. Uh, and what we want to do is to be able to share uh, our expertise and technology uh, with Poland. Since 2010, a U.S. State Department initiative has quietly promoted the development of shale gas resources in countries like Poland. Exploration drilling sites like this one offer the promise of a shale gas boom in Poland. But many residents who live near the drilling sites feel that the gas companies and their government have left them out of the decisions that could crucially impact their way of life. We are in Szeszewo, a small rural community. Behind us there is a new investment, a gas rig. Last June, the unexpected arrival of drilling operators sent local residents like Grazina Mazanowska scrambling for information. We discovered what it was when some workers, who weren't locals, started building an access road, as there was no information provided to us by local authorities. About 30 energy companies, both state-owned and international, are operating in Poland. While the majority of Poles support shale gas exploration, residents who live near the drilling sites say they want it safely extracted. We are not against shale gas, but we want to enforce that the company's compliance with our laws and to ensure that the most important things, the water and the environment, are preserved. We are going to be here long after the company is gone. Hydraulic fracturing was developed in the United States. The process involves injecting millions of gallons of water, sand and chemicals deep underground to fracture the shale rock and release the gas. Fracking is credited with sparking a U.S. energy boom, creating jobs, and lowering energy prices. Yet the process has also raised questions about water contamination and air pollution that are under investigation by the Environmental Protection Agency. In eastern Ohio, Youngstown resident John Williams collects water samples from a culvert near a gas drilling rig. Thousands of feet below him lies the Utica Shale Formation, which is being hailed as a new frontier in U.S. shale exploration. Once a thriving city in the U.S. Steel Belt, Youngstown has endured decades of decay. News of a shale gas boom in neighboring Pennsylvania that has delivered jobs and revived the local economy is hard for anyone here to ignore. Yet residents like Williams, whose father worked in the steel mills, are concerned that a gas company was permitted to drill in the Youngstown watershed area. We are in the drinking water source protection area for Meander Reservoir, which is the water supply for 220,000 people. With blowouts and spills reported at drilling rigs in Pennsylvania, Williams now regularly tests this stream for pollutants. In the U.S., as in Poland, energy companies are snapping up concessions and drilling, in some cases before local residents are aware the projects are underway. We're in Youngstown, Ohio, in my backyard, and it borders Mill Creek Park. If you look straight across there, that's a uh, glacier, Lake Glacier. Lynn Anderson lives next to the second largest urban park in the United States. She used freedom of information requests to learn that shale gas companies had recently leased deep drilling rights under the park. And they're asking for pre-drilling water testing. So, you know, us citizens who pay taxes to support this park are very worried. We're asking them, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, and they have said nothing. Elsewhere in Youngstown, a once decrepit factory now employs 350 workers making pipes for gas drilling operations. But the shale gas boom also presents Ohioans with a familiar dilemma. Within view of the factory, an abandoned well used to store fracking wastewater. We're standing outside the DNL North Star 1 injection well. Uh, this injection well is the site of 12 earthquakes. Susie Beiersdorfer is a geologist and an adjunct professor at Youngstown State University. This is a map that shows where the epicenters were for the 12 earthquakes from March 2011 to January 2012. A preliminary report by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources found the injection of fracking wastewater triggered the earthquakes and the well has been shut down. According to ODNR, there are now 192 injection wells in Ohio that have received fracking wastewater from Pennsylvania.
the injection well triggering the 4.0 big earthquake, that really woke a lot of people up. Um, on the one hand, Chamber of Commerce and other service businesses are very excited. Cities have given tax subsidies, given away free land, other things to um, entice companies to come here. But on the other hand, Youngstown has a long history of industry coming in here, extracting the resources, polluting the land, and then leaving. The rapid expansion of the shale gas industry has left communities in the U.S. and abroad struggling to grasp the trade-offs of fracking, says energy expert John Banks of the Brookings Institution. This activity, this, this boom, this rush of shale gas production really outpaced the ability of policymakers and regulators and local communities to handle the, the process and to handle all the impacts that were emanating from, from shale gas production. The debate over fracking has slowed shale gas exploration in Europe. Bulgaria, France, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and the Czech Republic have all imposed moratoriums on drilling. However, the Polish government recently eased drilling regulations to foster more exploration. So far, the arrival of drilling operators in Poland has been met with resistance and suspicion by locals. Last August, a gas company subcontractor visited Edvard Savitsky, seeking permission to survey for shale gas on his 340-year-old family farm. He left some papers with me to sign. The top one was a blank form, but I looked at the one underneath, which had a handwritten note on it. Oral permission granted. Savitsky soon discovered his neighbors had signed the papers, claiming they were promised free gas and oil. I get grants as an organic farmer from the EU. How is it possible for someone to drill for gas on land that had been certified as organic and dedicated for organic farming? Worried the family farm was hanging in the balance, Savitsky took his frustrations public. I got this idea to use a wall of my barn to protest against shale gas exploration in our area. I have lost faith in self-governance on all levels, whether it's the county, county councils, or mayors. There is no point in voting because nothing has changed since the communist era. In its quest for shale gas, Poland hopes to emulate the U.S. model. But drillers in Poland face some big obstacles. You have some very significant infrastructure con constraints to taking advantage of, of shale gas in a region such as, such as Poland. Um, you also have differences with regard to the mineral rights. U.S. landowners own the rights to the gas and oil below their land. Not so in Poland, where the state owns everything 50 centimeters and below. If you don't own the mineral rights, then you don't have as much skin in the game, and you therefore might be more inclined to not um, promote or support shale gas development. A gas drilling pad sits 300 meters from farmer Mirchesław Rukowski's fields. We live in an elevated area. The soil is very weak, permeable. We often experience droughts. Fracking typically uses between two and five million gallons of locally sourced water per well. I suspect that with the depletion of groundwater, we'll have a very serious problem. I keep looking at this horrible rig and wonder whether it will pose a threat to us. We would like to see some assurances from the government that we are going to be compensated in the case of some ecological disaster that will impact our livelihoods. The government says, should a drilling accident occur, local residents have the right to sue the drilling company. The farmer has the ability to defend his rights at the court, and that's, 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 that's sometimes that it's obvious that it will finally finish in, in court, but that's, the, the, that's democracy, right? The Polish government sees a future where shale gas revenues fill state and local coffers, and Polish consumers have lower energy bills. The Polish economy will make money by reducing gas prices, thanks to national production. So far, Polish residents have seen little direct benefit from the drilling rigs in their midst. We are very skeptical about any potential benefits to our community. They promised employment, but everybody realizes that only expert workers with special training can be employed here. Shale gas is also promoted as a bridge fuel that will help Poland move from its overwhelming dependence on coal to cleaner energy. Not to mention reduce reliance on Russian gas, which is seen as a threat to Poland's energy security. With so much at stake, some residents who oppose fracking claim they have been targeted for their views. We had a meeting in Weba. 
which was also attended by a representative of Wayne Energy, who later sent a report to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in which she claimed that we posed a threat to Poland's energy security. Gas companies have just started to explore concessions that cover nearly one-third of Poland's territory. This all but guarantees more Polish citizens will come into contact with gas exploration efforts in the years to come. We don't have, as a country, so long history within, within the shale gas operation and even exploration. So this educational uh, part of the, of the process should be treated with extreme caution. If exploration is to move forward, drilling operators will need the support of local communities, says Marcin Zimba, spokesperson for the shale gas drilling operators in Poland. There are plenty of myths uh, that are circulated among the local communities uh, and the role of the operators should be to dispel such myths and, and uh, to give the real picture of, of how hydraulic fracturing, fracturing works, that maybe the, the amount of chemicals used during the fracturing is not that significant. Maybe these substances used during hydraulic fracturing are not that dangerous as some materials throughout the internet uh, try to, try to uh, show. The Polish government is aware of growing friction between local residents and the drilling operators. And the National Gas Company is responding with plans to ramp up efforts to win the hearts and minds of citizens. We can't do business without social acceptance. The best way is to go down to the lowest level, talking to people, organizing seminars for them. The second way of reaching local communities is the press, including mainstream and tabloids, and the internet. For now, the Polish government and gas drillers face the challenge of pursuing valuable energy deep in the earth without fueling descent above ground.